All right, we've done Mercury, Venus, Earth, and Mars, my very excellent mother, as well as Moon. Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune are next. Just sent us nine. Don't forget that between Mars and Jupiter, there's the asteroid belt. So my very excellent mother actually just sent us nine pizzas and Cokes. Then we'll do some moons of interest and uh, we'll go out to the leftovers and some interesting stories. The thing that's kind of neat about these outer planets, we're not gonna, this is gonna be very brief, but there's an interesting connection or segue into stars. And so we'll talk about that. Let's take a look up here. Remember our memory aids and all. So we see that we've we've taken lots of trips to to moon right there, the plus one of Earth, my very excellent. There it is, the third rock from the sun, as they say. Um, we haven't done much to to Mercury, but a key one was a key mission was Messenger in 2008 flew by and then settled in in 2011. So a lot's happened, think about it, a lot's happened in the 90s and especially the 2000s. We really started doing things. We did stuff, uh, we did went to Venus, so, but there's a lot of information, so let's get a sense. Lots of missions to Mars. Uh, while Venus is closer, Mars is friendlier, but still there's plenty of missions. You see the asteroid belt there. And then we've got missions to Jupiter, Saturn. Not so much to Uranus and Neptune. We'll talk about that. And then flyby Pluto. So let me do a little quick list and we'll talk about this. So the list goes like this. I mean, this is the way you kind of get a sense. Maybe you don't memorize it. Depends on whether your professor wants you to. But it helps you get a sense, right? So we got missions here. Um, we can talk, there's just, there's so many missions, right? The pioneer missions, but let me just say Voyager 1 and 2. And you can just think 1980. So it was known in advance that the outer planets, which are way, way out there, the outer planets were going to line up in such a way that if you go by one and pull you into the next one, and then they sent two missions and they carried some information in, in case some extraterrestrial life, intelligent life, picked it up and we could communicate with, uh, with sound, with, with, uh, with uh, images, with the patterns, which we think of as math, as quantitative patterns, uh, that could communicate where we are, where we were. Because maybe as the sun explodes and we go away, you know, who knows, maybe we'll pick something up that some other civilization sent out. So these are pretty cool to learn about, and I'm gonna, not going to do everything on this video. I'm going to have you go to, you can see some information in my book, and you can also go to nasa.gov, which I'm going to show you, because that's a great source, and go online. So, But look at these missions. So like I say, 80s, 90s, 2000s. So Galileo mission went to Jupiter, so that's Jupiter, and left in 89, got there, so five, six years to get to out to Jupiter. That's, that's a long time, right? Um, and then uh, settled into orbit, had a, some great discoveries, looked at moons, saw a comet that flew into Jupiter, but it doesn't have a solid surface, so it went poof, poof, poof. Talk about that later. Um, and then when it was done, we didn't want it to go into any of the moons because moons might have life. We still don't know. In fact, an exploration is getting ready to go up to be discovered, uh, to be discussed later. Then we got the Cassini mission to Saturn. So you're going to fly by Jupiter, right? I mean, if you can, why not fly? I mean, Jupiter could be way over there and you're going there, but why not do it so you can go by Jupiter and get some good, more good images? So Cassini, 97. So you know, five, six years, another year out to Saturn. So you're, you're really cooking. This is a, a lot faster mission, but but quite a bit later, right? So, and then it orbited. Uh, lots of great data, and we'll talk about it, uh, other things about it later. And what did we do? Well, we didn't want it to crash into moons because moons can have life, and they might have life, and we'll explore those next. So we went into Saturn. Again, not hitting a solid surface, but going through the clouds 
in through that until it died to send back as much information as it could. Uh, outer planets, Jupiter in orbit, where Simon first time went into orbit in the outer planets, Cassini around Saturn in orbit, New Horizons to where? To New Horizons way out there, Pluto left in 2006, did a flyby. So, you know, these are things like orbit, orbit, flyby. You know, these, again, maybe you won't remember all that, but you get the sense, just think about it, run it through your brain. Don't overwhelm yourself with just memorizing right away, but the more you get acquainted with this kind of stuff. Um, and then now, Juno, and you can look up the mythology of where does the word Juno come from? Where does that name come from? But it's, again, Greek, Roman mythology, you hear that. So, um, left 2011, got there 2016, still taking data, measuring things, uh, finding out more details, details, details. And we find out that there's a lot of, a lot of this has to do with chemistry. So we've got missions here. Um, or the outer planets. Just to give you a sense, right? So, you know, lots, lots of information gathered, but more missions to be had because it's pretty interesting. So, let's talk about these outer planets in general and then just do a few little quick things and I'll show you some other stuff. Okay, so we know the size, right? Remember the size? If one of these was Earth, we could get four across Uranus and Neptune. We could get 10 across Jupiter and Saturn. Okay, if you wanted to go nine for Saturn or nine and a half, that'd be good. If you wanted to go out to 11 for Jupiter, fine if you wanted to be picky, that's okay. Uh, but you get this sense. But what are they? What are they made of? So what are they made of, basically? And again, you can study more, but let's just get a sense of what these things are. Do, I encourage you to, to do a, a search on the internet. Look for pictures, I look for video. Why, we've got those missions. So mostly hydrogen and helium, right? The main constituents of the universe. Hydrogen and helium, the simplest atoms. We'll talk about those more again. Water, there's water out there, which is hydrogen and oxygen. Methane, which is hydrogen and carbon. Ammonia, which is hydrogen and nitrogen. Interesting that those atoms like each other and they tend to bond in those formats. Methane, like natural gas. Natural gas is mostly methane. Ammonia, ooh, strong smell, but you keep it clean, right? Uh, and water out there. So interesting, and some other things you can explore that too. So that's basically what they're made. Gas, liquid, and ice. So a lot of gas. We call these the gas giants and these the ice giants, right? Gas giants and ice giants. And it's, it's, they're huge. There's a lot of gravity. There's a lot of gravity. But they're not the same as these metal core, rock mantle worlds. They're a different world. They're gas. And as you go down, the gas gets compressed into liquids and some ice is in, and ice can be used in kind of a funny way. So that's a little bit tricky, but so they've got these layers, kind of like our atmosphere layers, right? And they've got many, many layers in them, but think of them uh, in this way. So in terms of a core, is, the, is there a core? Can you go down? Is there a solid surface? Well. Possibly, I'll, I'll say, I, you know, possibly, it's uh, it's really being explored. I mean, you you might say that there's a kind of an Earth-sized one of these guys at the center of Jupiter and Saturn, and maybe Moon or Mercury size or something. So just a little, quite a bit smaller, right, bit inside of uh, Uranus and Neptune. But you know. Rock and ice, uh, but there's there's questions. And we have to. It's it's not easy. We can't see inside. But you take a lot of data, and people do a lot of the detail work. And I can 
let you explore that. But the in interesting, there is not a surface to speak of. You got land, you can land on moon, fine. You can land on Mars, you can land on Venus if you want to, not gonna last very long. But there's no surface, you just keep going through the clouds, through the clouds. Now there are layers, and I'm not gonna get into those layers here. I'll let you explore them if you like, but there are layers where, again, the gas gets compressed into liquid. And so it gets a quite, quite an interesting exercise in chemistry. And so you, what you do on Earth, you, know, you use one of these guys. You can pump a lot of air or other gas into here and change the temperature and see what happens. You can take the air out and see what happens, as we did with Mars. And you, you do those kinds of experiments, and you find out how that stuff behaves. Okay, so, so you could say, does it have an atmosphere? It's kind of like, well, it is an atmosphere. I mean, largely, right? So that's what these guys are, right? Keep it simple on your first pass and go into more details as you get interested. So you've got crazy winds, though, whipping crazy winds. You've got convection, which means from the inside, hot gas can rise up, cool, and sink inside the world out. Right? You can call it, if you want to call that a surface, but do you call the top layer or atmosphere surface? It's kind of strange, right? And then you've got the thing spinning. These things are spinning around. The gas is spinning around at different rotation rates, often faster near the equator and slower near the poles, and sometimes sort of a reverse spin, right? And let me show you that too. So that's the essence of these worlds. They have moons, lots of moons. In fact, it gets kind of frustrating because I keep finding them, and I, I don't want to. I can't say how many moons are there. Well, I don't know. I, you know, in fact, I might go if I said for Jupiter and Saturn. I don't know. Now I'd say sixty to eighty moons, but some of them are really small chunks. Like really a moon. I, Anyway, but they got lots of chunks going around them, lots of moons. And some of them, a few, handful, are, are large and interesting. Some are small and interesting. So we'll talk about that. And they all have rings. But of course, when I say rings, you think Saturn. You think, oh yeah, Galileo saw those first, and then now we know much more. Rings. Um, they've all got rings, but they just don't stand out like Saturn's do, so they're hard to see. But if you've got lots of moons, you're going to have lots of moon litter. So if the moon, moons spew out things or something hits a moon, asteroid litter, comet, just all this debris that just kind of swirls around in the gutter there of the, of the planet. And it's rock and ice chunks. You can have, uh, you know, we'll talk about that, but ice chunks that could be, you know, a snowball you could throw at your friend, um, or a house-sized chunk, which you wouldn't want to throw at your friend. That's, that's the essence, and we've, we've done a lot of missions, and we've studied this. Let me take you over to, uh, let me take you over to nasa.gov slash planets. And here's what I'm gonna do. There we go. All right, let's take it over here. some really good information. And they, NASA, applause to NASA for many reasons, but applause to NASA for really improving the website too. Uh, that's pretty cool, isn't it? What do you think's in the background? Well, of course it's sun, right? And then we've got, the, here we go. You know, you, you know the widths of these guys. You know the distances. You know simple fractions and 10-4 big buddy. So that's pretty cool. What is this? You can, you can just do nasa.gov, or you can do solarsystem.nasa.gov, and then if you want, you can do slash planets, but you can look at solar system, planets, moons, asteroids, comets, meteors, and it's nice. Don't be intimidated. It's, it's, they, it's, it's really made some improvements on this. It's very nicely done. Applause to whomever. So check that out, and, and so you can go here, and you can explore whatever you want. Who do you want? explore these guys, get a little summary, and the more, as we know, repetition, getting familiar with this stuff, and then it's easier to summarize 
the information of each of these things. Okay. So let's talk about what have I got here? What have I got up here? Doesn't matter. Oh, we'll come back to that. Well, let me go Jupiter. Yay! Look at Jupiter. How cool is that? All right? So Jupiter, that's a nice picture. And look, I do want to say though, you know, these numbers are pretty hard to re hard to remember. So I, don't worry about those numbers. Don't it, it's not going to stick with you. You know, use the ten four big buddy things like that. Get a sense. Get a sense, right? And summarize a few things, a few bits of information. Okay. Twice as massive as all the other planets combined. So there's some cool things, and it's pretty well written, right? So you go like that. Look at that. This is Saturn and one of its big moons. Oh, excuse me. This is Jupiter and one of its big moons. Um, and it's gas. Remember, that's not solid. I mean, you look at Jupiter and you go, what is that? Is that, is that wood? Is that some polished wood or mar? You know, some rock, granite, something? No, it's, it's gas. It's just gas, right? Galileo went, shh. Layers and layers of gas. You, you study the layers of our atmosphere. Well, this thing is crazy. Very detailed, whipping around. But it's not static like that. These things are moving, and I'll show you that. And then there's that. So, things to know. There are these bands that are called zones. And you could draw it kind of white and maybe orange or reddish, we call it red, red-brown, right? So white zones and this kind of red-brown, uh, we call it bands, bands and zones. And it's whipping around, and what you have here is a storm. And if you, if you remember the picture of the sizes with the 10 Earths, or if you want 11 Earths across Jupiter, then you go, hey, that's about two Earths wide right there, isn't it? And what is that? That is typically, people know it as the great red spot. The great red spot. Now, personally, I like to coin a term, and did in my book, um, and I call it the Eye of Zeus. I think, I mean, this is an amazing planet. That It's Jupiter. That's the Roman name for the Greek god Zeus, king of the gods, right? King of the sky, thunder, lightning, the whole thing. And you're going to call that the great red spot? Really? I mean, what is it? It's a, it's a storm that's been seen as long as we can see it, over a 300-year storm. I mean, talk about bad weather. Man, when's this weather going to let up? Well, I don't know, another 400 years? And we thought it was kind of getting weaker, and then it's getting more, and Juno's exploring the different layers of the gas. I mean, it's a huge storm, and these other little storms. It's crazy, right? So crazy winds, and the great red spot, or if you prefer, as I do, the eye of Zeus, um, is, is a tremendous feature on Jupiter. So we see Jupiter with light and dark bands, swirling winds, hot rising up, uh, turning into white clouds, and, uh, and you've got these features, and then the great red spot, or I have Zeus. So that's, that's the essence, you know, what I'll expect of Jupiter. And you can see the light and dark in a, on a nice clear sky with a telescope. You can actually kind of see I, light and dark bands and a really good setup to see that, that spot. So, there you have some of Jupiter, and we should take a look at what Juno showed us here. This is the, uh, if you will, the, the North Pole of, uh, of Jupiter. And again, crazy, and, and you colorize so you can bring out details. So crazy cyclones of gas. This is gas, this is not lava, this is not salt, this is not rock. This is not one of those worlds. It's a gas giant. And so again, we colorize, and that can be deceptive. But there it is. Um, a 
that's a Pioneer flyby 1973. So um, let's do, I want to do, here, this is what I want to do. And this is the Hubble NASA and ESA is the European Space Agency here. European Space Agency. Um, so I like to go to the source. Take a look. Now think about it. Don't think about it as solid and sitting there. Don't think about it as solid Mars. Now some of these, you're going to see it speeded up so you can really see this. Yeah. So the gases go in different directions and it's just huge gas cloud, right? Gas clouds. Belts and zones, right? Let's see that Eye of Zeus. There it is. Is that it? Where is that? Right? So you got this. That's it. That was the one. Okay. So, lots of cool stuff to explore. Um, another one is, is that? Uh, another one, let's see if we do Jupiter. And uh, Wikipedia's got a kind of a cool set, actually. Let me do that for you here. Uh, let's do that. And no, 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 no. Let me go to here. And I'm going to go here. Yeah. And so. Images. There's, that's nice, right? It's certainly sped up, right? But there's, there it is, the eye of Zeus, great red spot, and all this gas swirling around, and it's not solid at all. Just want to point that out to you. Um, you know, you can study it in lots of different ways and colorize it and, and pick up these swirling patterns and look how cool that is. Now, that's Voyager 1. You know how long ago that was. That was our first real good glimpse at that, is it? flew by, right? So roughly 1980. Um, so lots of cool stuff. Just get a sense of this world. Um, it does have very faint uh, moon litter called rings. And it does also have sort of auro aurora. Now, it does have a very strong magnetic field, and there's something I wanted to talk to you about here too, is the magnetic field is sort of a different source. Um, and so when you get electrically charged things swirling around, a flow of electrically charged things like electrons, or atoms that have lost their electrons, electrons, things that are flowing, that creates magnetism. Don't overthink that. But Jupiter does have a large magnetic field. It turns out that the, the um, aurora of Jupiter and the outer planets is not from the solar wind. It's pretty green up there, but too much information. So you can get an overload. Just get a sense, okay? Just get a sense. Kind of cool stuff. And uh, it's way out there. Uh, what is that? Okay, I don't know what that is. Let's take a look. No, no, no. There, okay. I wanted to show you. Um, oh, all right, well, I wanted to show you a, a distance scale. Uh, oh, okay, wait, wait, wait. Let's go here. Let's go to in-depth. Just, you know, just have a little fun and then come away with some basics. Here we go. That's a, this is a picture that I thought was nice. Look at that. That's pretty nice, right? Um, sun. Mercury. Now, that, the sizes can't be right with the distances being right. So you have to make it big enough you can see it. But uh, Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars would all be in close. And then remember that's one AU. So then you really and this isn't quite one two. Ah, well, it's not quite right. So it's not. It's kind of. You know, so it should be four AU here. 
four AU out to Saturn's orbit, you know, the 10 out to Uranus and 10 out to But you get this sense. So there's a lot of good, good sources. So that's, that summarizes some of Jupiter. We've got the uh, belts and zones, the bands, and we've got the great red spot, or um, the eye of Zeus. And Saturn, of course, is glorious. And again, you can't remember the distance from sun, whatever, miles or kilometers, what do you want? Neither. Uh, how about Earth to Jupiter orbit, 4 AU, uh, Jupiter to Saturn, 4 AU, fine. You can kind of start to see that. Uh, but it is gorgeous, right? Sun's coming this way, you got Terminator, cast a shadow. These things look solid, what are they? Well, they're just chunks, reflecting the sunlight and looking solid. And very thin. So Saturn's got these very thin rings. How thin? At places as tall as like a two-story building. I mean, two-story house. I mean, very thin, and they're orbiting. They're not just sitting there, they're orbiting chunks of ice, and some like this, some houses, orbiting around. But lots of moons that sweep up the gaps. So the most dramatic things you see right here, the most dramatic things of Saturn, still same kind of idea, but different color, right? So that's in the chemistry of that. Still basically hydrogen, helium, with some water, methane, ammonia. But without going into that, you still have the swirling. It's not as obvious here. You, of course, the feature that stands out are the, the rings swept up by the moons and could even accrete into a moon. Uh, and so you get these gaps, the biggest gap called the Cassini division because uh, an astronomer named Cassini uh, saw that first with his telescope. And the other feature is this. Look at this. One, two, three, four, five, six hexagons, six-sided, but it's not solid, just like the eye of Zeus. Oh, sorry, the great red spot. It's not solid. It's this gas setting up in this pattern. So by studying this, we understand a lot of things that we apply on Earth as well. So that's, that's a good bit there, right? Some overview if you want, some pictures, glorious pictures. Right? And then colorized, right, so we can pick up some details. That will look fun, you know? And so people study the heck out of this. Right? They, this is pretty cool. And it's a beautiful thing to look at and see with your naked eye. So I encourage you there. And uh, what else? Well, there is, of course, uh, Uranus and Neptune. I'm going to come back and summarize in just a second. But there's Uranus. Now, I think, I don't know if you can pick that up here on this um, yeah, may maybe, but you see some images and it has a greenish blue uh, hue to it, sort of a greenish blue world. And you, it doesn't, you don't see any solid. Again, remember, it's gas and then layers of liquid and sort of a, a kind of ice, a strange, interesting chemistry of layers here. Right. So, so, and you know that, okay, you get one, two, three, four Earths across, so Earth would be bigger in this picture. And you can study a few things, and I'll talk with you about that in just a moment here. Um, colorized, it does have rings, but they're very faint. And a few things here that I encourage you to explore with that. And then let's just take a quick tour over to Neptune. And a, a gorgeous blue, right? The sea blue. Neptune, the god of the sea. The Greek would be Poseidon. Now, Uranus is actually a Greek name. The other ones were Roman names, whatever. But what about the other people in the other cultures and with the other stories? So it's fine, but that's what we call it, right? The windiest planet, okay. Swirling gases also. This is called the, the dark spot. It's actually not there, so Voyager 2 caught that and it looks great and then not there, but you see, you see clouds, you know, and layers, and I'm gonna mention something about Neptune, but I thought, you know, uh, I'd share this. 
beautiful images. And you can colorize it and look at the clouds and try to pick out the clouds. And these are the clouds. I love that picture right there. And uh, anyway, so a bit about Neptune and then some things about Neptune and, and very cool stuff. So I encourage you to explore that. Um, you can explore missions. Here's the Cassini mission. So, you know, you can... You can definitely geek out on this stuff and have some fun. Galileo mission, right? Uh, you can go in overview or in depth or a timeline of what it found and, you know, play around. Obviously, you can't memorize all this stuff, but you can, you can have some fun with it. Okay. Let me, uh, Bring up some light and uh, do a quick little see how you would take all that information and what can you hold on to? What you can hold on to, you know, is just some of the essence of all these. And then you can hold on to things like, uh, all right, let me, uh, let me draw Jupiter. And so. I'm gonna draw. I'm gonna draw Jupiter. I'm gonna go like this, and I'm just gonna go, go like a reddish brown bands and uh, white band. We call these uh, zones or white zones and reddish brown belts. And, you know, you saw that. So summarize that. It's in the book, right? Two Earths wide, 300 plus year old storm that's been going on, and, and and it's moving, and it's all moving, and differential rotation, convection, and all that stuff. And you saw that. So you you know the widths and distances, and yeah, you know, that that's what's up with with Jupiter, um, 60 to 80 moons, things like that. What's up with Saturn? Well, let me write some notes that I can kind of hold on to and remember, and. If I did Saturn, of course I'd do rings. I might do it a yellowish kind of color. I don't know, so something like it. But, but the thing that's cool is this one, two, three, four, five, six sided hexagon uh, of, of gas flow. It's weird. It's, how is how's that? Good? And then, of course, the rings. So Saturn. You yeah, can learn more about that. Uh, let me, let me do a couple of things of interest. Uh, now, Saturn is fairly bright and yellowish in the sky when it's out at night. Uh, Jupiter's quite a bit brighter and uh, maybe has a, a little reddish hue, hue to it. Uranus, on the other hand, and you can look at the symbols that I've uh, given you in the book, but uh, Uranus has a, an apparent magnitude of about a six, a little less than a six, maybe 5.6, depends on where it is and things like that, but so right on the border of what you might be able to see. Maybe, maybe people, when they're drawing their, their dots, maybe they included it, maybe they didn't. It's like really faint. What is that? Oh, it must be a star. And Kepler's third law. You're going way out there. Remember, planets, as you go farther out, go slower. It goes so slowly, right? Incredibly slowly. How long does it take to go around? About, right? About a human lifetime. So um, it's crazy. And and what's what's cool about it? So, so it, it wasn't necessarily known. Is it a star? Is it a planet? It wasn't seen to move its location relative to the stars, right? So it wasn't, it's not a day of the week. They didn't honor a day of the week after Uranus because, well, it wasn't really discovered until the 1700s, until realized, realized. And then they explore, like, what is that? And then you see, okay, well, that does move very slowly. So, so that's interesting. I'm gonna tell you something else about it. And then, uh, so if you've got sun, here's an interesting thing about Uranus. Way out there, you know how far. But, it doesn't spin. Well, these all spin, actually. They're gas, and they're spinning rather rapidly. But it doesn't spin 
like this, right? Let me use Earth. It doesn't spin like that. It doesn't tilt like Earth. It's like this. It's tilted completely over, spinning around like this, and the moons are going around like this. And it goes like this as it orbits sun. It's about a 90 degree tilt. So that's a weirdness. That's certainly a weirdness about Uranus. You, know, you barely see it and you don't really notice it as a moving object, a wanderer or a planet. And it's tilted all the way over. So that's interesting, we'll come back to it. It's kind of a greenish blue. Now, when you finally realize that it is a, a wanderer, it is moving, you watch it and you watch it and you apply Newton's laws and you see what's up. And, and even before computers, this is crazy. People, people are really capable with their mathematics to be able to do this. Even before computers, they found out that it wasn't quite obeying Newton's laws. It wasn't quite obeying Newton's laws. And I want to say, you know, all the other planets recognized as planets by the naked eye, because you could by naked eye tell that they were changing position. It's the first one that was like, oh, that's a planet. You needed a telescope to figure that out. And then the next one, Neptune, used mathematics, looking at how the orbit of Uranus, Uranus, was not quite following the rules. It looked like it was being pulled by something. And with my brilliant mathematicians and mathematic work, realized, and you can look at that little story in the book, um, that something must be pulling on it in the sky. And that, that something must be like somewhere around there. Why don't you go look? And it was really close to where the mathematics and the physics predicted it would be. And that, of course, is Neptune. Poseidon. Go to the sea. And what is that? Uh, you know, and it depends on where it is, but like, a, like about an eight. You cannot see Neptune with your naked eye. So for most of history, right, astrology, they don't know anything about this because they didn't know it existed. If they do, they make something up back in the day, you know, that doesn't work. But nonetheless, it's a beautiful blue planet, and uh, it was discovered by looking at how Uranus was a little bit off. It was discovered by math and physics, right? Prediction. So I think that's pretty cool about these worlds, and uh, I, I have one more little interesting thing. I was going to pull it up, and maybe, maybe I will. And, uh, you know, methane. Carbon and hydrogen. Carbon. I see. I see carbon. I see uh, hydrogen, oxygen, oxygen with hydrogen, I, water. I see carbon with hydrogen, nitrogen with hydrogen. I think oxygen, carbon. That makes me think of stars, and you're going to see why. So there's, there's something there with stars, but uh, carbon. I also think of uh, pencils, and I, and I think of oh, I think of diamonds. Right, carbon. So, under the right temperature and pressure, you have diamonds. And so it's really kind of cool. You can pull it up yourself, you can search it. But look, look for diamond rain. Raining diamonds, not like, but, you know, raining diamonds, a possibility here with, with uh, Jupiter and Saturn. Uranus and Neptune. There's even, Still, I find bits and I, you know, of maybe there's an ocean of diamond, liquid diamond with diamond glaciers. I don't know. We, we only went by <coughs> Voyager 2 way back, right? Eight ladies. Like, we got to go back. We got to go in there. Get some diamonds back. I don't know. It'd be so cool. In fact, there's a, there's a world around another uh, star that seems to be by various calculations diamond and there's other other elements of diamond so there's a lot of carbon out there a lot of crazy temperature and pressure 
a lot of possibility for diamonds. So I think that's kind of a cool thing, and, and that's what this is about, getting a sense of these crazy outer planets, outer worlds, make it simple, you know, summarize it, have some fun with NASA, and, uh, and get to know your, those worlds out there. And, and again, I don't know, Saturn, 50, 60, 60, 70, 80, maybe 80, maybe 80 moons up there. Now I don't know. Uh, Uranus, we, we think 27, so, you know, less than that. Neptune, 13, we'll see. Um, Pluto, five moons. So we're going to moons next. All right? Have some fun exploring.